Hey guys, what's up and welcome to the Redstone Handbook Episode 3, a series of videos designed to teach you the fundamentals of redstone so you can start to create your own contraptions and understand how other people's designs work. In this video, we are going to be taking a closer look at the comparator, what it does, how it works, and how we can use it in contraptions. This will also require us to take a closer look at signal strengths. Let's briefly go over what signal strength is again. Signal strength or power level can be anything from 0 to 15. This is the distance the redstone signal will travel along redstone dust. As you can see, when we step on this weighted pressure plate, it will power one dust, and if we drop our stone on it, it will go two until we pick it back up again. However, this redstone lever is going all the way to the 15th piece of redstone before it runs out on the 16th here. Don't forget though, these signals can be extended with a repeater. So now let's look at what a comparator can do. A comparator can maintain the signal strength. By standing on this weighted pressure plate, the pressure plate will give off a signal strength of 1. Therefore, the comparator is receiving it and then also giving off a signal strength of 1. If we drop an item like this stone in my hand, as we did over there, it will increase to 2. And then we'll output 2, as we can see by that light lighting up until I again pick up the item. That is because the pressure plate is emitting a signal of 2, the comparator can maintain that and also output 2. So if we manage to get this up to a signal strength of 3, it would light up this last light here. Also guys, we can put the pressure plate right next to it and it will do the exact same thing, it's emitting 1, so having that bit of redstone dust there doesn't change anything. So as you can see, this redstone here is turned off. If we turn this on, Right here, we have a signal strength of 15, 14, 13, and then 12. So if we come along to the 12th piece of redstone here, it should be lit up like it is. That is again because the comparator is maintaining the same signal strength. If we try it again with this one, for instance, that should be 15, 14, so it's receiving 14. And if we come along to the 14th piece of redstone, it should light up this light. The comparator will always output the strongest signal that it has, so even if we turn this one on which had a power of 12, it will still emit the 14 because it is the higher one that it is receiving. The comparator does get more complicated than this. It can indeed be, as the name suggests, used to compare signals. In this setup, if the input running into the side of the comparator is larger than the one running into the back of the comparator, the signal will turn off. However, if the input running into the side is lower than running into the back, it will be turned on. So if we give this a signal strength of 13, and then give this a signal strength of 14, you will see it turns on. But if we give this a signal strength of 14, and this a signal strength of 13, then it will not turn on. So guys, the comparator actually has a, another mode as well. If we just click it, right click that is, it will turn on this little red light. So what that will do is basically subtract this signal strength coming into the side from this signal strength coming in from the back. So if we gave a signal strength of 12 into here, and then, no, we don't want to do that. If we gave it a signal strength of 14, and then over here we gave it a signal strength of 12, we're going to get a signal strength of 2 out here because... 14 minus 12 is 2. This works uh, with 13. It will give us an output of 1, won't it? Let's, um, let's subtract 13 from it, and it turns off because 13 minus 13 is obviously 0. So if we give it a nice 15 in the back here, and then we just take off 14, we'll get 1. If we take off 12, we will indeed get 3. As you can see, the lights are lighting up like that. So basically, the signal strength into the back minus the signal strength going into the side. A comparator can output a different signal strength depending on how full the container is. If the container, in this case a chest, is empty, the output will be off. When the container has any items in it at all, we need a calculation to figure out the signal strength. I will put the equation up on the screen now. As you can see, we need to find out the sum of all the slots for fullness and the number of slots in the container. So for a chest, that is easy. It is 9 by 3, so that is 27. There is 27 slots in this chest. The fullness of a slot is the number of items in the slot divided by the max stack size of that item. So, for example, stone can stack to 64, so 64 is its max stack size, whereas snowballs and enderpearls can only stack to 16, so 16 is the max stack size for those. So in this chest here, I have put in three stacks of stone. This one is easy because for each slot, we can calculate the fullness of the slot to one, as the number of items in the slot is 64, divided by the max stack size of 64 gives us one. So we'll have three stacks, so we can add together the one plus one plus one for each stack to give us three. 
So now we can put that into our first equation and we already know the number of slots in the container to be 27. So now the equation reads one plus bracket three divided by 27 bracket times 14. So now we can calculate that three divided by 27 is 0 0.111 reoccurring. So now we can take that answer and multiply it by 14, which gives us the 1.5 reoccurring. Now all we have to do is add one to this, which gives us a total of 2.555 reoccurring. And all that's left to do is floor the answer or always round down your answer to the nearest full number. In this case, it is two. Even if the answer comes out at 2.999, you still round down to two. So the signal strength will be two. This works for all containers. There's a helpful list of information on this on the Minecraft wiki if you want further information. So like I said guys, three stacks would give us an output of two, so only two lights are lit up. Well wow, guys, that was a lot of information. So that's it for this episode of the Redstone Handbook, but in the next one, we will be going over Redstone Gates so we can further improve our circuits. I hope you guys found this educational. If you want more information, I would honestly consider going and checking out the wiki for Minecraft. It will make a lot more sense. And trust me, you don't need to know that much about comparators. You will, you will soon get it. A lot of the time, you just want to see if there's anything in a chest. So you can just take an output of one because even one item in a chest will output a signal strength of one. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please punch that like button for me and also check out the other episodes of the Redstone Handbook in the description. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Happy Redstoning.